Hey guys, today we're going to do a quick video on the differences between mitosis and meiosis. Sound very similar, in many ways are very similar, but yet very different. So many of you guys, I'm sure are familiar slightly with some of the differences. Mitosis is going to be, I guess you'd say, the more common uh, scenario in the body because we've got you know, millions and millions and millions of cells that, that, that undergo mitosis. And mitosis, of course, is considered cell division, right? What's the purpose of it? We've simply got one cell that is dividing into two. And what's the key thing about mitosis is that you are gaining an exact copy of that previous cell. So if mitosis is occurring correctly, you should have one cell producing another cell, right, by cell division, and it should be identical genetically to that previous cell. Okay, and it should have therefore 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs. It should be exact same cell type. That's the point with mitosis. Any cell that can undergo mitosis can do something we call hyperplasia, which means it can increase in cell number. Okay, we call all these cells that are created by mitosis diploid cells, right? Because they are paired cells. Die referring to paired, they are paired chromosomes, I should say. 23 pairs of chromosomes. That is different from meiosis. Meiosis is only for the egg and the sperm cells, okay, which we call germ cells, referred to as gametes, or referred to as sex cells. Um, those are the only cells in the body, so we have a lot more cells undergoing mitosis than meiosis, right, in, 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 in numbers. Um, again, meiosis is only reserved for egg and sperm, and this is the first and key thing about meiosis is that every time an egg or sperm is produced by meiosis, we are not getting an exact copy. We're getting egg cells and sperm cells, but we're getting them genetically different. It's gonna contain the DNA of the parent, but it's gonna be shuffled. And that is the term that is used, and we'll talk about it here in a little bit. It, it, there's a shuffling of DNA, okay, and a shuffling of the chromosomes that occurs uh, each time the egg and the sperm are produced, and that gives us genetic variability, which is why, you know, parents have two kids, three kids, four kids. They're all going to be different. They have their similarities because they came from the same two parents, but yet they are going to have genetic variability. They're not going to have exactly the same DNA, right? and they're not going to be exactly the same in personality and in physical features, okay? Uh, so that is a key thing of meiosis. You're not getting exact copies. Also, meiosis is considered a reduction division. You are starting with 46 chromosomes, okay? And you are going through two phases. So we can put this down here. There's two phases to meiosis. It is going to go through the same five steps, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, cytokinesis, but meiosis, it goes through one phase and done. Sorry, mitosis. Meiosis is going to go through a first phase, starting with 46 chromosomes, then go through a second phase of the same thing, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, cytokinesis, winding up when it's all said and done with 23 total chromosomes in the egg and in the sperm. That makes it referred to as a haploid cell, okay? Now, when we are, um, let me talk about one of the unique things real fast. In meiosis, and it's refer, it's, it's in prophase one. I've talked about a bunch of unique things, but this is in prophase one. It's called crossing over. We do not see crossing over in mitosis only in meiosis, and that is what we were just talking about a minute ago, the shuffling of DNA. That shuffling of the chromosomes is what's going to uh, give us the genetic variability of each of the egg and each of the sperm cells that are produced. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, so I wanted to mention that real fast. Now, end result, right, of the egg and sperm. That's the question. What do we get? We always get with each meiosis, we got a cycle one and cycle two. What do we wind up with? We actually start with one cell, which is four, actually 46 chromosomes, okay? 
we will wind up in the male with four sperm. When it's all said and done, each sperm is 23 chromosomes, okay? And genetically different, right? It has that variability. And the female will wind up with one egg and three polar bodies. Polar bodies. Now, what are the polar bodies? Think of those as just extra three non-functional cells, okay? Because it's true, typically each month, we're, fem female's gonna kind of have one egg released, okay? Not four sperm like the male, okay? So that's our quote unquote end result, 23 chromosomes each, and obviously it's gotta be 23 from the egg and 23 from the sperm, so that when they combine, Right, the, fer the sperm fertilizes the egg, we get our 46 again. We, the 46, the 23 pairs are restored, okay? So those are some of the key things. Now one other thing I wanna mention is, sperm and egg are not quote unquote produced. Meiosis doesn't begin in the uh, ovary or in the testes until puberty. So puberty triggers all this to happen, okay? so. Prior to puberty, you know, from birth up to puberty, whether it's a boy or a girl, really the ovary's not really doing anything in either of the testes, okay? Everything really kicks in at puberty, okay? And so testosterone at puberty uh, is going to trigger the testes to start making sperm, okay? And in the female, it's the ovaries uh, producing estrogen that are going to trigger the eggs being released, okay? And so one of the unique things is that with the male, you know, the same things happen in every day. We know with the female, there is a cycle. And everybody's probably heard this. All the eggs are in the ovary when a baby girl is born. That is true. And you say, well, how is that possible? You just said nothing happens until puberty. Well, what happens is in the womb, believe it or not, meiosis starts. And this is for only the female not the male. In the womb, meiosis begins and it runs prophase one. And it will form what is essentially like a primitive egg, okay? And it will form about two million primitive eggs, okay? And then that baby girl is gonna be born with roughly two million primitive eggs, you know, between the two ovaries. Um, and that is gonna remain dormant those, those, those eggs will basically just be sitting there in the ovary until puberty. And then basically what happens at puberty, when estrogen kicks in, uh, what's gonna happen basically, and, and, and a couple other hormones start really being activated, like FSH, um, the egg will then be released each month. And what it's gonna do is it's basically gonna pick up meiosis where it left off. So it's gonna pick up here at the prophase one and go into you know, prophase, then metaphase, and anaphase, and it will finish out the rest of the meiosis process. So that's what's a little unique and a little different about that. So keep that in mind. For the male, again, none of that happens. It just starts from the beginning at puberty, okay? So just keep that in mind. I hope that helps. It's just a quick rundown on the differences between the two. Till next time, good luck and study.